BDS is back in the headlines. That's boycott, divestment and sanctions, the Palestinian-led movement that targets Israel for human rights violations and for its illegal occupation of Palestinian territories. Congresswoman-elect Ilhan Omar has come out in favour of BDS in principle, the first member of Congress to ever do so, though she's also acknowledged it might not work in practice. But some folks they didn't react so well. The Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, put out a tweet calling her position alarming and claiming that BDS questions Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. Rashida Tlaib, who was also elected to Congress in November, the first Palestinian American woman ever to be elected, also came out in support of BDS in an interview with The Intercept, upsetting even more supporters of Israel in the process. And it isn't only pro-Israel groups like the ADL or Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that get mad about BDS. Plenty of leaders across the West have tried to suggest BDS is anti-Semitic and illegitimate. From Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. There's only one word for it, anti-Semitism. Let us call out the BDS movement for what it is. To British Prime Minister Theresa May. That there can never be any excuses for boycotts, divestment or sanctions. They are unacceptable, and this government will have no truck with those who subscribe to them. To Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Jewish students still feel unwelcomed and uncomfortable on some of our college and university campuses because of BDS-related intimidation. You too, Justin. You too. So it's time to really do some BDS myth-busting. First off, the goals of BDS are pretty clear. They're not hidden or secretive. I mean, they're on the damn website. Three very specific goals. Ending Israel's occupation, getting full equality for Palestinian citizens of Israel, and making sure Palestinian refugees have the right to return to their homes in line with international law. They don't say a word about Jews or even about the Jewish state. They're all about human rights. Maybe the rights of humans you don't like, but human rights nevertheless. And some supporters of BDS, yes, support a democratic, binational, one-state solution to the conflict. But others, like Ilhan Omar, support a two-state solution. Then there's the whole issue of double standards. That's the main criticism of BDS, that it holds the state of Israel to a standard to which it doesn't hold other countries, which proves it's anti-Semitic. You can't only talk about Jews, and you can't only talk about the nation state of the Jewish people. You have to have a single standard. Well, hold on. All boycott movements are guilty of double standards. You can't boycott the whole world. Take South Africa. Loads of Americans, including American Jews, boycotted apartheid South Africa in the 1980s, even though the Mobutu dictatorship in Zaire and the Mengistu dictatorship in Ethiopia at that time were equally bad human rights violators, if not worse. Was that a double standard against poor old apartheid South Africa? Supporters of Israel lose their minds, of course, if you dare suggest Israel is guilty of apartheid, even though everyone from UN investigators to former Israeli ministers to former US presidents say it is. Based on the evidence, uh, the authors concluded that Israel has imposed an apartheid regime on the Palestinian people wherever uh, they reside. By the way, the African National Congress, the ANC, the Congress of South African Trade Unions, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu, all of the folks who were on the front line of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, today, they all support BDS. Hmm, I wonder why. BDS critics always say there's a double standard. What about all the other countries who are guilty of human rights violations? Syria, Iran, Russia, North Korea, what about them? Now, not only is this pure whataboutism, it's deflection and evasion of the worst sort, but just look at the facts. Syria, Iran, Russia, North Korea are all, rightly or wrongly, subject to sanctions of some shape or form. So maybe supporters of Israel should be careful what they wish for. And by the way, on the subject of double standards, how about the double standards on the part of BDS critics? Take Andrew Cuomo, Democratic governor of New York and hardcore opponent of BDS. Today I'm going to sign an executive order that says very clearly we are against the BDS movement and it's very simple. If you boycott against Israel, New York will boycott you. And yet when Mike Pence's Indiana passed a horrific law in 2015 discriminating against LGBT communities, this same Governor Cuomo ordered a boycott of that state, including a ban on New York public officials from traveling to Indiana. Got that? Boycotts against Indiana, totally fine and not anti-Christian, but boycotts against Israel, totally not fine and anti-Jewish. Huh? 
Incidentally, Cuomo's boycott of Indiana isn't something new or unheard of. Remember the boycotts around the Boston Tea Party in the 1770s? Or Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott of the 1950s? You could argue that BDS is as American as apple pie. You could also argue that Ilhan Omar is just following in the footsteps of Rosa Parks when it comes to boycotts. And yet she's been accused of anti-Semitism. Hold on, if supporting a boycott of Israel makes you anti-Jewish, does that mean supporting a boycott of, say, Saudi Arabia makes you Islamophobic? And if so, does that make Ilhan Omar, one of the first two Muslim American women ever to be elected to Congress, an Islamophobe? Because guess what? She supports a boycott of Saudi Arabia on human rights grounds too. What was that about double standards? Uh-oh, there goes that talking point. Of course, much of the criticisms of BDS are just pro-Israeli talking points. They're about undermining and silencing the occupied Palestinian people. Think about it. Palestinians try and fight for their rights. They try violence and they get called terrorists. They try non-violence, they try boycotts and they get called anti-Semites. They can't win. Remember, the call for BDS first came in 2005 from Palestinian civil society, from hundreds of activists and NGOs on the ground in the occupied West Bank and Gaza. As Jewish American journalist Peter Baynard, who doesn't support BDS as a whole, though he does support boycotting Israeli settlements, as even Peter wrote recently, the reason other countries have not elicited BDS style movements is simple. There's been no mass call for BDS from inside those countries themselves. Look, I'm not saying BDS is perfect which movement or campaign is. Nor am I saying it's definitely gonna achieve all its goals. Taking on the state of Israel and its supporters around the world isn't easy. And I also accept it hasn't yet really damaged the Israeli economy. Although the recent decision by major global brand Airbnb to remove postings for homes located in illegal Israeli settlements was a big win for BDS. I'm also not denying that some anti-Semites may have infiltrated the fringes of the BDS movement. That's what anti-Semites do. They use the cause of Palestine as cover for their bigotry. But why define BDS by that tiny minority of anti-Semites? Why ignore the growing number of Jews and Jewish groups who support BDS, like the organization Jewish Voices for Peace? Or my Intercept colleague, Naomi Klein. I support BDS, and I, I've supported BDS since 2009. Or the famous Israeli journalist Gideon Levy. BDS right now is the only game in town. Why isn't BDS defined by them? And look, I get it. Jews have been subjected to boycotts for centuries, most recently and tragically by the Nazis in Germany. But it's a complete smear to suggest that BDS should be equated with that dark and ugly history of anti-Jewish boycotts. Listen to Professor Daniel Blattman, historian of the Holocaust at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and a critic of BDS. But even he says the boycott imposed on Jews by anti-Semitism and the boycott of Israel today have nothing in common. And yet you have these constant smears put about by hard-right billionaire and Republican Party donor Sheldon Adelson, who has spent millions trying to fight BDS on US college campuses. By lawyer Alan Dershowitz, who goes around the world debating and attacking BDS. And by the Israeli government, which appointed a minister specifically to tackle BDS. A minister who has since banned Jewish American supporters of BDS from entering Israel. Now my own view is that any movement that gets this far right Israeli government and its most vocal supporters up in arms must be doing something right. And so either way, Ilhan Omar or no Ilhan Omar, BDS isn't going anywhere.